All right, here we go. Let's keep this train rolling with rational functions. Uh, we're gonna be looking at some zeros here, the zero of rational functions. So let's get, let's start with example one here. So domain, we've done domain before. Remember we have problems when the bottom equals zero. That is trouble for us. You're not allowed to divide by zero. So I went ahead and graphed this where you can see it. And you can see this goes on forever and ever this way. This goes on forever and ever in this way. There's really no issues here. This is all real numbers or it goes from negative infinity to infinity. Well, why does that happen? Well, check it out. What's tricky about this? Will the bottom ever really equal zero? No, because anything that you square is positive, add four to it, it's still positive. This just can't happen. There's no way that the bottom is gonna equal zero. So we're pretty cool there. So don't forget about domain. He's still, uh, he's still hanging around. Uh, he'll be there for a while. But now what we're gonna do is to find the zeros. So think about zeros. So I can see them on the graph. It looks like there's a zero right there. Looks like there's a zero right there. They're the x-intercepts. What causes that? Well, it's actually when the top is zero. So the bottom is for the domain. You can't divide by zero. But let's say you have a fraction. What happens if you take any fraction and the top is zero? So if the numerator is zero, pick any number on the bottom. What's zero divided by four? It's zero. What's zero divided by anything? Zero divided by 92? Zero. So again, if the top, if the numerator is zero, the whole thing is zero. Let's get rid of that. Uh, awesome. So. Let's go ahead and figure out when the top is zero, and that'll give us our zeros. So we're going to do a little factoring here. What multiplies the negative 8, adds or subtracts to 2, it looks like x plus 4, and x minus 2. So we're going to do a lot of little chill factoring here, this section. I'm sorry, this whole chapter, this whole unit. Um, so what would make that zero? Well, that would be if x was 2 or if x was negative 4. Awesome. So where are zeros? Negative 4 and two. And did that match our graph over there? Sure thing, man. There they are, negative four and two. So it all worked out. We're all happy. That's the whole section. Holy cow. Well, it's going to get a little trickier. Let's take a look. Some other things can happen. So again, if I quickly look at this, the, where's the problem with my domain? Remember, the domain is the bottom. I can't have a zero on the bottom. So I can see four is a problem. So everything's cool from negative infinity to four. I cannot be four. And maybe I should add that little union in there and say, okay, it's going to be from 4 to infinity. So those are the two intervals where the domain exists. Now I'm going to come back and say, hey, what about the top of this? When does the top equal 0? So on top, I've got what's going to multiply to 12. Ah, that, let me fix that up a little bit. What's going to multiply to 12? Add or subtract to that negative 1 here. So if I factor this real quick, you've got x minus 4, x plus 3. And now check it out. So we've got negative three is a possible place in four. Uh-oh, I've already used four. Remember down here, this x minus four? Oh, interesting, that, that looked a little rough. x minus four down here. So I've already used it. So what is happening here? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. I went ahead and pre-graph this. Oh man, I've actually got a hole. So you have to be careful. We're gonna talk, there's a whole section, just a whole section for holes. <laughs> Chewing that for a while, but there's a we're going to talk about holes more depth. But there it is. So you can see there's a hole in my graph. Well, what causes that? Well, if you've got these factors that cancel, so boom and boom. See how these canceled out? That's going to create a hole. So you actually have a hole at x equals four, which means it's not a zero. Even though it's on top, it looks like it make the top zero. It doesn't because it gets canceled, so it doesn't work. So the only one who's really making the numerator zero is this negative three. So that's going to be our x-intercept or our root or our solution, whatever you want to call that bad boy, or zero, and you can see him right here. So you just have to be careful that it doesn't cancel out. Long story short, if it cancels out, no longer a zero. That's two examples. Could be record time. Uh, I love formal definitions. So here's the formal definition of zeros. Basically, what did we just talk about? They cannot have any common factors. The zero happens when the numerator is zero when the top is zero, but they can't have any common factors. That cancels it out. All right, here we go. Let's look at the next example. Ooh, now we got to worry about vertical asymptotes here. So don't freak out. There's going to be a whole section on vertical asymptotes, and I went ahead and I graphed it for you so we can kind of see what's happening here. But there's other things that may cancel. So we don't always have holes. Sometimes this can happen, but really everything starts off the same. We're looking for, okay, domain, no zeros in the bottom. So quickly, let's factor this. What multiplies to give you 10 and adds or subtracts to give you 3. Looks like I think it's 5 and 2. Is that cool? And then does the top factor anything in common? Sure, they have a 4 in common. So I'm going to say 4 
and pull that out, you get x plus 2. Awesome. So if I'm looking at where my issue is, negative 5 is going to be an issue, and 2 is going to be an issue, and negative 2. Oh, did they cancel? Does anything cancel? No. It's close, but we've got a negative 2 and a positive 2. These factors aren't the same. x plus 2, x minus 2, not the same. So we're cool there. So for domain, what's happening with the domain? I'm going to be everything from negative infinity to negative 5. In union with the next interval, I can see is from negative 5 to 2. I'm cool if I go there. And then in union with the last interval from 2 to infinity. And I went ahead and pre-graphed this for us so we could take a look at it. Does that make sense? Sure, everything is cool until I hit this negative 5. And then I get this vertical asymptote. Draw that little bad boy in there if you want. We can see there's a problem. And then at 2, there's another issue. We've got another vertical asymptote right there. So we're kind of looking for problems. And we found them. There they are. All right. Did any holes happen? Did anything cancel? No. So we don't always have holes. That would just be if something cancels on top and bottom. I've got no holes in this one. We're pretty cool on that. How about zeros? Again, the zeros is when the top equals zero. So does that ever equal zero? Sure. Negative two. We already solved that factor and solved it. We get negative two on top. Does that match my graph? Yeah, there it is right there. I can see that bad boy. Put a big old dot right there. And do we have vertical asymptotes? Yes, we have vertical asymptotes. So it's these places on the bottom that didn't cancel. It's when the bottom equals zero. When that happens for domain, we say it can't equal zero. When it, when it actually does happen, that's causing the vertical asymptote. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 5 and 2. So again, basically, we're going to factor everybody. If it doesn't cancel, it's going to be a vertical asymptote. If it does cancel, looks like it'll be a hole for now. Awesome! We are cruising. That could be a record here. So let's do without a picture. I have no picture to go on. If you want to pause it and try it and see how you do, that's cool. I'm going to go through it quickly um, with you so we can just check it out together. Let's. I'll go in order here. Domain. We're looking at the bottom. So let's do a little factor factor. Ooh, I like that. What multiplies to 3? Only one thing that multiplies to 3. We're going to do negative 3 and 1. Sometimes they're so easy they're hard. Only one thing it can be, but it looks weird. Uh, on top, that's a difference of squares. So we've got x plus 3, x minus 3. So I always start off just say, hey, man, let's factor it and look for any cancellations. So is anybody going to cancel here? Yes, we have an issue at negative 3. So does that matter for domain? Domain doesn't care. He, there's issues everywhere for domain. The domain is just that bottom. The bottom can't equal 0. So when I do this on bottom... Um, he's going to say, yes, we have issues at where? Negative infinity to, maybe I should put some numbers here. We had this problem at 3, negative 1. Remember that 3 on top was the same, and negative 3. That's where all our issues are. Again, domain doesn't care in the bottom if you're a hole or a vertical asymptote. He doesn't really care. He just knows there's a problem there. So we will be cool from negative infinity to negative 1. And then we're going to go from negative 1 to 3. So it's just the bottom. I got too excited. I canceled that out too early. I just get too fired up to do these. And then we're going to go 3 to infinity. So cancel, no cancel. Who cares for domain? We've got problems down here. So we identified the problems of domain. There's going to be breaks in the graph. Uh, is there a hole? Yes, I already canceled it. I got really excited there. There's a hole at 3 because it canceled. So that's going to cause some kind of hole in the graph. Just draw a little open circle. Wait if you had to graph it there. The zeros, are we going to have problems with zeros? The zeros at the top. So this is a hole. Holes can't be zeros. So we can't even mess with them. But that top is negative 3. We'll make the other one. We'll make a uh, x-intercept because it makes the top 0. So we're looking over here. When the top is 0, it's this one. Excellent. Vertical asymptotes. Do we got some? Well, that's a hole. We already labeled that a hole. So it's the other guy over here. We're going to say x equals negative 1. And again, we'll get way more in depth on these later in a the next couple sections, um, but we got to be able, they're going to be a problem because they mess with our zeros. Excellent. So we've got that vertical asymptote of negative one. Horizontal asymptote. Oh, this is old school. Going back to last section. So we're now looking at the limit uh, to infinity. So I look for the high power. So you see the high powers right here. They are going to be the same. So it's one and one, the highest power. So I know that gives me a horizontal asymptote at one. When we're looking for bigger in the top, bigger in the bottom or the same. And then y-intercept. What happens if you plug 0 into this equation? I mean, you can go ahead and do that. You can say 0 squared minus 9 all over 0 squared minus 2 times 0 
minus 3. But when you're plugging 0 in to find that y-intercept, what's going to really happen? You're going to get a lot of canceling. 0 is just 0. 0. 2 times 0 is 0. What are you left with? You're just left with this last part, the constant, the negative 9 over negative 3. And negative 9 over negative 3 is just 3. That's the y-intercept. If you'd like to write it um, as the y Sorry, as a point, you can put it as 0, 3, but a lot of times we say the y-intercept is 3. That's where this bad boy starts. Awesome. That was it, man. If you can do that, you're going to crush this. So it's a lot going on. Our main focus is 0, but the holes kind of mess it up because you could actually get a hole right there on the 0, and it doesn't count. And then vertical asymptotes happen, so it's might as well. Let's just talk about them now. Rock and roll. Last one with a graph, though, just to make sure graphically, maybe I don't give you an equation, so you can't do all those fun rules. Can you just look at this? And for these pictures, we're going to go ahead and say, the, ah, these are vertical asymptotes. So ch -ch -ch -ch. sometimes I draw them in. Sometimes I just say, hey, it's going to be one. There it is right there. So we've got issues there. I can see that little hole right there. I can see some other things happening here. It looks like it's crossing right here and right here. So can you label all these points? Sure, man. Let's do it. So the domain is very smooth until I hit, what is that? One, two, three, four. Looks like four is my first issue. So it's kind of like, where do I have to lift my pencil first? I'm going to have to lift it at negative 4. Okay, and that's in union with the negative 4. So I had to lift my pencil to come up here. Now I'm drawing. Don't lift my pencil. Don't worry about zeros. Who cares? You're just chilling, chilling, chilling. Uh-oh, problem hole. So I had to lift my pencil here, and then I can put my pencil back down. So anywhere you lift that pencil is a problem for domain. Where does that happen out here? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That looks like 7, I think, out here. Hope I can count right. And then the last interval where it just kind of flows is 7 to infinity. Awesome. So it's continuous on those intervals right there. Excellent. Uh, so where was that hole? I can see it right there. We just counted that out. X equals 7. Where are those zeros? Where does it cross? It looks like negative 2. I love it with this picture. It looks like x equals negative 2 is the first 0, and the second one is where? Negative 2 and positive 2. Excellent. So those are where it crosses the x-intercepts. Uh, is there a vertical asymptote? Sure, I drew that in there. We've got that happening at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then is there a horizontal asymptote in this case? No, I don't see a flat line. It kind of goes forever and ever up, forever and ever down as I look at the end behavior. So there is none. That's totally cool. You don't have to have everything. Can't get everything you want. Uh, and then we're going to estimate the y-intercept. So where is that y-intercept? It's right here. It looks like it's not even uh, a half. So it looks like, I don't know, I'm going to say approximately negative 0 0.3. So roughly it looks like it's uh, that negative third right there, somewhere around that. Awesome. So graphs are great. One other thing with graphs, because we're kind of getting the feel of these graphs, is, boy, let me bring that to the front. Okay, so we're going to look at this sign table here, which is pretty cool. We're going to say, okay, over these different intervals of x, what is the function doing? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it an intercept? Well, there's kind of different things. And this will be important later on when we kind of have to think about what a graph is doing without seeing it. But for now, I just want to get used to this flow here. So on this first interval from negative to negative 4, where is the graph? Well, the function is what? All I really care is that he's negative. So a lot of times the sign, we're going to look at like if sign changes from negative to positive or different things, so we got to be able to just kind of understand, oh yeah, it's negative. What about at negative 4? You can do something like does not exist, D-N-E, undefined is cool, oh my gosh, does not exist, undefined, definitely cool at negative 4, it's that vertical asymptote. Uh, how about from negative 4 to 2, so it looks like I'm negative 4, I'm sorry, negative 4 to negative 2 is up here, so you can see it's a positive, I'm just going to put positive if that's cool, uh, you can write that out if you want. Then I hit negative 2, I hit a 0, so we're kind of identifying the key parts of the graph. The 0, then from negative 2 to 2, it is negative. At 2, what happens? It's back to 0. And then from 2 to 7, it's a positive function. It's above uh, the x-axis. At 7, we've got a hole. Holes are undefined, or you can put does not exist. There is no answer here. Calculator would say error. That's undefined. And then 7 to infinity, it's going to be positive. So it's called a sine table because I'm looking at the sine of the function. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it undefined? Is it a zero? So that's going to be helpful later on. I just thought I'd throw that in there. It's so fun. 
All right, man. Good luck on the practice and uh, on the Master Tech. Peace out.